And uh, just with the remaining time, I would like to point out chapter lesson 10, Sanhi table. We've addressed n, we've addressed m. So I want to now address t. So here's the concept. Uh, remember, Sanhi means just uh, what if the word, word one, right, ends with a t. Okay, so it ends with a t. And it joins a word to that begins with, right, with this column uh, or this column. So suppose that a word one ends with t and it joins a word that starts with g. Okay, so here it is t plus g. What's going to happen to the t? It's going to change to a d. So just uh, in English, you can say, for example, uh, chair, and I'm just going to imagine chair, right? You just imagine there's a t there. Uh, chair um, and mouse. And suppose um, it's not a mouse, it's g mouse. G mouse. The animal, the rodent. So what's going to happen? So what's going to happen to this uh, chair? It's going to say into um, chair d. Why d? Because we have the d there. Chaired, and then you just continue. You don't touch the second word at all. Chaired, mouse. Now the t is actually quite common because you got ashwat. Right, so for example, say Ramat. Okay, so here it is. That's the same concept. G and the T. So what's going to happen here? See this yellow block here? It says join. This means join for the entire, there's no exceptions. Just join the two words. That's all it's saying. So the final product will be uh, Ramat. Ramad. And then you just continue, don't touch the second word. Gotcha. So what's gonna it's gonna look like this? Uh, Ramad Ramad. Um Ramad Gachati. I hope it's like this, I think. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ramad Gachati. Andre, I'm a bit confused because what's the difference? I mean, the, the T is there and then it becomes a D. Um, no, I mean, there, we're not making much uh, changes. It's just the letter. Which Good. Is so um, thank you for reminding me. So the reason for this change is uh, what is Sandhi? It prepares the tongue for the next word. So say Ramad Gachati or say Ramad Gachati. Say that out loud. Ramat Gachati Ramat. or Ramad Gachati. We have to pause, is it? Ramat. So be conscious of that time, how it has to stop Ramat Gachati or Ramad Gachati. So this is the entire concept of Sunni. It's just for one purpose, making the smoothness of speaking possible and optimized. Okay, so what does this mean for us? It means that we need to look at this and create some English examples, like um, let's say this example, the monitor t. So this t, when it joins a l, what's gonna to happen to the t? It's gonna change into a l. So you're gonna have the final product, monitor l, right? So that l, was before a t, but no longer is it a t, it's now a l. And then words two, don't touch it, just add love onto it. So from monitor love into monitor love. Okay, same thing with uh, um, Sanskrit words. So then where you write there, it will be two l's. That's right, it will be two l's. So it will be something like, uh, is there a Sanskrit example? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking now. Um, yes, there is. In fact, it should be here. 
Yeah, Ramat Labate. Good. Okay, there it is. Ramalapate. See how you just put a double L? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Two hearts. Okay, so all the examples, this will be placed on the site. Please study it and write it out just for memory retention. Yeah. So uh, these here are actually examples for every combination on this side. So if you say what happens here, this little rule there, C number three. This number three, um, I will put on the website and you need to study it. In fact, what does it mean right now? See that number three there? Yeah. There it is. Um, the following, huh, this is the only time when the next word actually changes. Remember how okay. I said you always leave the second word alone? This is one of those exceptions. So instead of um, hastaha, you would have dastaha. Hastaha. When you change, when you miss a word with a uh, t, then this h would be a dastaha. So all you did is just added one little uh, d. So that's one of the exceptions. And there's also an exception here. Uh, exception number four, the following sh becomes a ch. So shishya, t plus shishya, uh, ramat shishya, right? Will be ramad, ramach, ramach. And then instead of shishya, it would be uh, chishya, ramat chishya. Ramat shisha, Ramat shisha. Uh, just a small exception, not too many, because in reference to the others, there's no exceptions. There's only one exception, two exceptions. And when I say exceptions, what does exception mean? It means word two has modification. And before we finish, let's go through first person pronouns. Page 128 of the book. Now, instead of saying gachami, I go, you can say finally English, aham gachami, the actual word, I. Okay, so um, for now, you don't have to worry about this, mud and asmud, this will uh, come later, um, it will have context. All you have to know for now is to get familiar with these words, I repeat aham. Aham. So no uh, mysticism about this word, aham brahmanasmi, it just means I, no different than in English. We too, this is with your partner, you would say avam. We, that means uh, many of us, repeat vayam. Vayam. So how then do we say I go? Okay, forget about the pronouns. How do you say I go using the gacha? Gachami. So now you stay with that first bottom row and you stick and you add the pronoun. Aham gachami. Ignore pronouns. How do you say we two go uh, using the gacha? Avam gachama. Gachawaha. Now let's add the pronoun. Avam gachawaha. How do you say um, we all go? Gachamaha. Vayam gachamaha. Vayam gachamaha. Okay, here's some examples. Rama comes to my house. Okay, Rama comes. Rama agachati. Rama comes to house. Rama Ramaha Graham agachati. Rama comes to my house. Ramaha Mama Graham agachati. Yeah, so it's not, you're not changing, you're just adding the, you know, mama and you're not changing the verb at all. Okay, man goes to village for me. Man goes to village. Naraha. Naraha. Gramam. Gramam. And then, uh, and then for me. Uh, you say here for what's for 
dative. Mahyam. Now, where would you put yeah. Mahyam here? Mahyam. Mahyam. Um, Man, believe. Gramam. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, or, again, in Sanskrit, the order is not that important. If you put Naraha, Grama, Mahyam, Gachati, would make no difference whatsoever. However, stick with a proper order. Why? Because remove Mahyam. Man goes to village. See how goes village, they're closest together. Goes village in English, right? Man goes to village. So keep that exact order in Sanskrit. Therefore, gramam gachati. Okay, so in other words, don't put mahyam in between because in English they're closest, therefore keep him closest in Sanskrit. So where would mahyam be then before? Yes, Bindu? Um, in the data, it says mahyam and me. Good, I want to so, get to that now. So this means uh, some forms do have alternatives. Now these short ones are called enclitic. Enclitic just means short, short form. There is a rule using enclitics. Never put them at the beginning of a sentence. This means the long ones, you can't put at the beginning of a sentence, but me, now, naha, uh, now, ma, never ever put it at the beginning of a sentence because enclitic, like cha, is an enclitic, cha, yeah. short. Uh, va is also an enclitic. So don't put them at the beginning of a sentence. Okay, so what else does this mean? Second point, you can interchange them. I suggest stick with the longer ones because they're easier to identify because with sanhi, you know, you got me and iti, you already got uh, some you know, changes there. So stick with the long ones. However, you need to identify both because in the text, both will be used. However, in most cases, uh, the long ones are 95% used. 